A long time ago, in a remote village in the state of Bengal, there once was a weaver who had two wives and a daughter by each. The older was named Deepa, and she was selfish and sly. The younger was named Rupa, and she was as generous and kind as her sister was greedy. Deepa's mother was the weaver's senior wife, and she was very jealous of Rupa and of Rupa's mother. But the weaver was a good husband and a loving father, and kept his family at peace with one another until the day he died. Deepa's mother took the opportunity to cheat Rupa and her mother of all their rightful inheritance and drove them out of their home to make their own way in the world. Out! Out! Both of you out of here now! I don't want to see either of you again! Please don't be angry, our husband! Don't you ever mention his name again! He was my husband! You late coming troublemaker warming your way into my household! I should have thrown you out a long time ago! Goodbye, sister. Perhaps we'll meet again. <laughs> Don't you ever go talking to her again, you wretched brat. Get her out of here now. I'm sick of you and your smiles. I'm sick of you and your KNBB friend speeches. Don't even think of coming back here. I'll beat you with a stick. <laughs> Rupa and her mother found an abandoned hut not far away and moved in, fixing it up as best as they could. They spent almost all their money on a spinning wheel to make thread for a living. Several days later, Rupa's mother went to market, leaving her daughter to spin all of their cotton into thread, which they could sell to buy food, a few little things, and some more cotton. <laughs> Who's there? The wind! The wind is talking! I'm making the leaves dance too! Aren't they pretty? Oh! Cotton! Pretty, pretty cotton! My cotton! Pretty, pretty cotton! Pretty, pretty cotton! Mm -hmm. Oh, wind, wait! Please give me back my cotton! Mm -hmm. Beautiful cotton! Rupa was heartbroken. Without the cotton, there would be no thread, no money, no food. She thought for a long time. Wow! Flowers! Pretty, pretty flowers! Wind? Aren't they pretty? See how they dance. Oh, Wind, please give me back my cotton. I can't. You can't? Why not? Did you lose it? No. What happened then? I took it home to my grandma. She saves all my goodies. But I need it, Wind. It's my only piece. I've got to get it back. It's all right. Granny keeps everything safe. Just ask her. She'll give it back. Who is your grandma? And where does she live? You don't know my grandma? She's the old woman in the moon. Everybody knows where that is. The old woman in the moon? Oh, goodness. How do I get there? Oh, it's easy. Just follow me. Come on, flowers. Pretty, pretty flowers. Whee! But the wind was too fast for Rupa. She started running in the same direction the wind went, eastward.
I am so hungry. What? I'm hungry. Uh, I'm sorry. I've never had a cow talk to me before. They must not have been as hungry as I am. Oh, you poor thing. I didn't bring any sort of food at all. There's some. Over there, lots of hay. Would you please bring me some? Oh, yes. All right. What brings you this way, child? I'm Ruba, the weaver's daughter. The wind took my cotton all the way to the moon, and I've got to get it back. You're on the right road. That rascal wind blew some cotton right past me. Really? Yep. Is right here all right? Wonderful. Will that be enough for you? Mmm. Mmm. Well, then I'm off. Thank you for the direction, and you do speak very well. Bye. She ran and ran until she saw an enormous tree standing at the crossroad. Have you lost your way, little one? I'm up here, among the leaves. Oh, you're a tree. A banyan, to be precise. I'm sorry, Mr. Banyan. This has been such a strange day. The wind talked to me and took my cotton, and I talked to a very hungry cow. And now a tree, I mean. I know, I know. Look, ordinarily I just listen. But today, I need to ask you a favor, if you would, please. Oh, yes, certainly, Mr. Banyan. What is it? It's been such a long time since anyone tended my grounds. Would you please sweep away this rubbish so I may look and live a little better? Yes, all right. Tell me, where are you going? I'm going to see the old woman in the moon. Ah, yes. I watch her at night. She spins, you know. She gathers up the clouds as she passes and spins them into fine silvery thread. Oh, that must be wonderful. We spin too, you know. We spin cotton to make threads. Is this good enough, Mr. Banyan? Beautiful. Thank you, Rupa. Rupa was sorry to say goodbye to Mr. Banyan, but she did need to go on. Water! Come up here, water! I know you're down there, water. I can see you there. Oh, water! I want you up here, water! <laughs> you silly horse! What? Water won't come up when you call it. It won't? No! But I'm thirsty. <laughs> I'm gonna die. No, you're not. Just watch. You have to get the water in a bucket, like this. Oh, I didn't know that. I'm glad you stopped for me. Where are you going? To the moon. The old woman there has my cotton. But I don't know if I can get there. Oh, you can if you ride a cloud. They fly up to the moon all the time, you know. Just go on to the east, that way. Some clouds always catch on the hills, so it's a good place to find one. It's almost night. The moon will rise any moment. Goodbye, Mr. Horse. I've got to run. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs>
Hello there. May I help you? Uh, uh, yes. I'm sorry to have to bother you like this. I'm Rupa, the weaver's daughter, and this afternoon I was spinning some cotton, and... Oh, you must be the one my grandson took the cotton from? Uh-huh. You came all the way to the moon just for one piece of cotton? You must need it very badly. Yes, Grandmother. It's all the cotton we have. Mother and I won't have any money to buy more until we sell some thread. But we can't make thread without cotton. But if you don't have any money and you don't have any thread to sell, how would you buy your food? We can't. But don't worry, Rupa. You shall have your cotton back. But before you go, would you mind doing something to please an old woman? Gladly, Grandmother. I would like you to take a dip in my pool over there. Just one, mind you. Oh, dear, am I that dirty? Oh, no, no, no. It's just to freshen you up a little bit. All right, Grandmother. It doesn't feel like water, Grandma. I feel so strange. As if you're dreaming. Yes, as if I'm sleeping. I can't open my eyes, as if I'm forgetting something. You're cotton, of course. But don't worry, dear. It's just the moonlight. It makes everyone feel odd at first. But that will pass. Now, let me see. I put your cotton in one of my chests over there. Help yourself to one. It doesn't matter which one. They're all full of cotton. And while you're doing that, let me see what I can do about getting you down safely from here. got a surprise for you, Rupa. <laughs> Meet my son, Hira. He's strong and fast, and he will carry you safely home from here. Thank you, Mr. Horse. Thank you, Hira. You're so wonderful, both of you. So Rupa said goodbye to the horse and rode Hira through the moonlight. When they reached the crossroads, they stopped to rest for a moment and to chat with the great banyan tree. Rupa, would you do me one more favor? Someone hit something hard under one of my roots, the one by your foot. Can you please take it out? I found something very hard. It's an old box. It's a doll, and it's so pretty. You're so lucky, Mr. Banyan. You have a doll of your very own. Now, Rupa, what would a Banyan do with a doll? I've stood on that hard little lump for 300 years now, and I'm glad it's out. Take her, Rupa. She's yours. Oh, thank you, Mr. Banyan. She's so beautiful. 
I've always wanted a doll my very own. So Rupa thanked Mr. Banyan and rode on. When they came to the cow, they stopped again. The cow thanked Rupa for all she had done for her, and she told Rupa to come to her for milk any time she was thirsty. Mama, I'm home! Rupa, I have been so worried. Where have you been? Rupa, where did you get all those beautiful clothes? And those jewels? Rupa, you're wearing a fortune. Ma, I got so much to tell you. I lost our cotton to the wind and had to go to the old woman in the moon to get it back. It's in this box. And I got so many gifts. The cow said I can get milk from her whenever I was thirsty. And Mr. Horse gave me his son Hira, who gave me a wonderful ride home. And best of all, Mr. Banyan gave me this beautiful doll. Rupa, your doll is wearing another fortune. We should keep her in a safe place. I know. Let's keep her in the cotton box. Rupa! Rupa's story would have ended here if it hadn't been for her sister's mother. Deepa, Deepa, something has happened. Last week, Rupa did not have anything to eat. Today, I saw in the market in fine clothes, carrying a fat purse. I want you to go to Rupa. I don't want to talk to her. Don't you want to find out where she found those pretty clothes and fine jewelry? What? Ugh. Oh, yes. Then you better go now. Her mother is not at home. Be nice to her. Make her tell you everything. You understand? Everything. Sister. Oh, Rupa, I've missed you so much. I. You're beautiful. Your clothes. How did you get these? I've been so worried for you. I've missed you so much. You did? But I thought you hated me. Oh, Rupa, I'm so sorry. I really never felt like that. Not ever. But what happened to you? How did you get these? It must have been something wonderful. It was. It was magical. Tell me. Tell me, please. Well, it all started after Mother left for the market. The wind came and took my cotton all the way to his grandmother, the old woman in the moon. The old woman in the moon? Now, you're teasing me. Tell me the truth. No, really. Where else would I have gotten all these? Go on. Go on. Well, I was walking down the road to the east until I met a cow. And then I... Never mind that. Get going with the rest of the story. How did you get these? Wind! Wind! Come and see my pretty cotton. Cotton just for you. Wind! Come here, wind! Wind, I want you here right now! Oh, you naughty wind! Bring back my cotton! Deepa ran and ran eastward along the same path her sister had. On the way, she met the animals and the tree. Could you help me, please? Hello there. Would you please do me a favor? Forget it, mister. Hello there. Could you bring me up some water? Be quiet, you ugly horse. Hello 
there. Who might you be? Oh, I'm Rupa's sister, and your wind blew away my cotton, and I would like it back. You are Rupa's sister? Oh, yes, and you gave her a lot of presents. And my grandson blew your cotton to me? I don't know if he gave it to you or not, but he took it from me, a lot of cotton, nearly a bale. And you would like me to return it to you. And I suppose you would like to take a dip in my pool. Oh, yes. Very well. Go to the pool over there and take one dip, just one, mind you. treasure? I mean cotton? Yes. Help yourself to one. It doesn't matter which one. They're all full of cotton. And while you're doing that, let me see about getting you down safely from here. Deepa landed at almost the same place Rupa had, but no one was there to meet her. It was a warm day by the time she reached the well, and Deepa could almost taste the cool, sweet water. The sun was getting hotter and hotter as the day went on. But just ahead was the great old banyan with lots of cool, shady places under its branches. But this day was becoming stranger and stranger. The sky was perfectly clear. But she came home at last. I'm home. Ma. I'm home. Ma, look. Wonderful. Here, put them here. Quickly check the door. Don't let the neighbors see. Ooh, this will show Rupa. This is much more than she has. Good, good, darling. You've gotten us two a big chest of treasure. Open them, Ma, open them. Woo! Oh, Look at all these gold necklaces. Look at these beautiful bracelets, emeralds, diamonds, rubies. Amethyst! We are rich! Are we really, really rich, Ma? Yes, we are! Look at this! Are we richer than Rupa? Yes, we are! Can I wear these every day? Yes! Can we open the other box? Yes, let's do it! Just as she had planned. 
Oh, no, no. My daughter said these were the gifts you have given freely to us. They're mine now. You can't take them back. Now you're going to get the gifts you deserve. I should have known better than to trust you to do this. You have ruined everything. It wasn't my fault, Mother. It was Rupa's. She tricked us, her and that nasty old woman. I hate them both. I ought to beat you, you awful, stupid, miserable, bungling, wretched brat. We were rich, rich, and now we have nothing. Nothing? <laughs> oh, no. For this was exactly what Rupa and her mother had when they were driven out of their home. <laughs> 